Hello and welcome to the Dapper Gaffer channel. I'm Josiah. We're here at City Stage Studios in Rockford, Illinois, and today we're talking about sound blanket burritos. Sound blankets, ferny pads, short for furniture, moving blankets, multiple terms for the same thing, and the burrito is just what this is called when it's rolled in this form factor. We use these for a number of different things on set for uh, sound absorption, soundies will use them for that, cutting reflections on a floor, for patting things in the truck, for sitting on, on top of an apple box for comfort, um, art department will use them for different things, just a versatile, versatile blanket with a lot of uses on set. The main purpose of this video is to show you how to roll this up burrito style, but we'll touch on a few things um, along the way. There are moving blankets and there are moving blankets. Not all are the created the same. <laughs> Unroll this one quickly. This happens to be the type that I use. I think I actually got them from US Cargo Control. We'll find the link if you're interested. Um, there's a number of different places to get quality sound blankets, um, but really what you're looking for is something thick and heavy because not only does it create, um, provide greater padding um, when you're using it for, for padding, uh, fragile or expensive things, but the density is really what's important for mitigating uh, sound reverberance. So this is a nice one. It's heavy too. It has a, a definite weight to it. This is a very cheap one from probably Harbor Freight or something like that. If you zoom in here, I don't know if you can really tell from the video how thin this is, but it's like, it almost feels like two kind of pieces of t-shirt material or something. You know, just very, very light, lightweight and cheap. You know, maybe if you need to buy a bunch of these just to kind of move house, that would work. But this is not really what you want to bring to a film set. This one's a lot thicker, heavier, lasts longer, and is just more useful. Now, I specifically like to get ones that are black on one side and white on the other because I can also use them for lighting purposes. I could potentially use the white side of this blanket, as long as it's stayed fairly white, and use that to bounce the light, or conversely, negative fill on the back side. So that's a preference thing for me. This is also a pretty heavy duty blanket here, but being blue, I just tend to find less uses for it. So the main things that are going to affect the price are the weight of the fabric and the size of the blanket. You want something that's pretty good sized to give you a frame of reference. I'm just over six feet tall. It's probably like 72 by not quite that. You can spend a fair bit of money on these, like to the tune of 100 bucks or more. I don't know if that's entirely necessary. Maybe there's some things that make them better. I know you can get some that have grommets in them and stuff like that. Um, but the main thing you're looking for is a decent size and a good weight. I, I just looked up quickly. I think these ones were, uh, for a frame of reference, listed as 95 pounds a dozen. So a dozen of these would weigh 95 pounds to give you some frame of reference of the kind of weight that you're looking for. Why is it important to know how to roll one of these into a burrito? Well, I'd say there's just a whole lot of people that do it, and I think it's just gotten even more popular through the years that I've been in the business. They stack up nicely. They don't take up a lot of space. If you do it right, they stay together all in one piece. If you're working on sets, the chances are someone does them that way, and it's good for you to know how to do it and look like you have been around the block once or twice. All right, let's show you how to wrap this thing. Usually, a sound blanket is not going to be a square. There'll be one end that's slightly longer than the other. I find it's typically best to head the longer direction going this way and face the darker side down. That's gonna show less dirt than this white. Now there's two different ways to do this. I'm going to show you what I think is probably the more repeatable, um, like consistent every time way to do it, and then I'll show you a shortcut. So what you're going to want to do is take about the first foot or so of this blanket, fold it under like that, then you're going to fold it into thirds, like 
this, like that. Come over to the other side and start rolling it up. You can roll it up just from the end like this. Another little quick tip. I like to start it like that because it just shortens the amount of time that it takes to roll it up. Start rolling nice and tight. And you're just going to roll it up on top of that edge we just flipped over. Tilt it up on end. I like to kind of squeeze it between my legs so it doesn't get unrolled. And then you're going to take, let me show the camera here, take this flap that we created, this kind of pocket we've created, and pull it over the roll here. And one side of this is going to go in this first coil, <laughs> this first fold here. And the other side will go all the way around there. Flip it over. Again, hold that with your knee. And same thing on the other side. One side goes in that kind of first coil. I don't know why I'm using the word coil. I guess that's maybe relevant. <laughs> Pull that around the end. And then you get a nice, tight, compact way to store this blanket. And I mean, you could, if it's done well, you can throw it in the air and it still stays in one piece. A little football kind of shape. That's how you do it. Now I'll show you a little slightly quicker way to do it, but a little bit trickier. The nice thing about this is it's very quick to unfurl as well. Just grab it from there. You're ready to go. We're going to start the same way. Throwing it away from us the long way. And we're going to go straight into folding it in thirds this time. Now, I don't have to go to the other end on this because it doesn't matter in this instance. Again, I like to kind of give myself a head start by giving a little thicker piece to roll. Make it nice and tight. You can see my, my mark there from previously. <laughs> and then you just kind of have to open up this end a little bit. It tends to be a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of a triangle sort of shape. Roll it up on top of there, and you're kind of creating the pocket as you go, pulling this into that, that coil. We're going to stick with that term on both sides and up over the top like that. It's, a, it's the same result, effectively, but as you can see here, it's a little bit looser. It, you can make it nice and tight. It's just a little bit trickier to get it perfect every time. So it's up to you which way you choose to do it. This can be a little faster if you do it all the time and you get good at it. Um, but the first way we show you how to do it, I think, is the more predictable way to get it right every time. And that, my friends, is how you roll a sound blanket burrito. Sadly, they do not taste as good as Mexican burritos. Right, Francisco? See. Sí. See. Sí. I should have Francisco showing you how to do this. I feel like that would be less cultural appropriation for him to do this, but he's running sound, so it is what it is. Little bonus for you when you're helping out the sound department. There's one guy I work with in Chicago who loves his sound blankets. His name is Phil with two L's. Shout out, Phil. We joked that he, he, he would have a truck full of just sound blankets if we let him. But a great way to help them out, just grab a C stand, make a T out of it, kind of halfway, unlike we would typically use a C stand with that pointing out. Not really an issue in this scenario because we're covering both ends with the blanket. Just lay that over the top. If you need to run it up a little higher, just kind of, I usually like to double it up on the top and then just put a grip clip on each side. Then you have the ability to have a bounce. Here, I'll turn around this way. 
a bounce. Filling in this side of my face in an easily controllable form. Or flip it around and you got some neg fill there. And I can hear, you know, just standing this close to it, how much quieter it is on this side of my head than this side. So they do make a big difference. Killing two birds with one stone. If you hate birds, this is a good thing to do. Terrible, terrible. Sound blanket burritos. Keep an eye out for one of these on your next film set. Sound blanket burritos. They look delicious, but they're not. <laughs>